today the dynamic programming will be discussed. How dynamic programming technique is used for solving the nonlinear programming problem? That part I will discuss today. Now, in dynamic programming problem, there are few properties. First of all, the dynamic programming can be also named as the multi stage programming problem because whenever we are dealing with a big problem, it is uh, we have to take decisions sequentially at different points in time in different points in space and even we can divide the whole system into different subsystems and we take decision for individual subsystem and from there we are finding out the optimal solution for the whole system, but all the decisions are taken in sequence. First we consider the first subsystem second, third in this way we are proceeding. That is why since we are considering different stages, that is why this dynamic programming can also be named as the multi-stage programming technique. Now, if we have n variable nonlinear programming problem, then a set of nonlinear programming problem can be solved, can be defined as a multi-stage nonlinear programming problem and the multi-stage nonlinear programming can be can be solved sequentially by solving different stages separately. Now, that part today I am going to discuss which kind of nonlinear programming problem can be solved using dynamic programming technique. Now, there are certain basic principles of dynamic programming technique that part I am discussing today. First of all, the first part is that the whole system has to be decomposed into different stages. For decomposition of the system into different subsystems, person should have the skill of doing that, then only a one dimen n dimensional problem can be defined in one dimensional problems. That part you need to understand. Now, it has been invented by Richard Bellman in 1950 and uh, here dynamic means we are considering the situation in different time scale, different space, different uh, subsystem, different platforms that is why this is dynamic in nature and programming we are using in optimization for planning and that is why this kind of, pro this kind of uh, situation where a problem can be decomposed into different subsystems can be tackled using multi-stage decision making problem, multi-stage programming problem or dynamic programming problem. Now, the entire dynamic programming problem is being dependent on the Belmont optimality principle. That is why we need to know what is the Belmont optimality principle. Now, one thing is that whenever we are considering a nonlinear programming problem, we are considering the objective function as well as the constraints are continuous in nature and continuously differentiable. If it is not differentiable, our classical optimization technique is not applicable there. That is why here also that necessity is there for solving the problem for non, the nonlinear programming problem, we need to have the function as continuous and differentiable. Now, we will solve in the next. Now, how to define, how to decompose the problem? There are few parts of it. First of all, we have to define the problem into different stages. Now, each stage will have different number of steps and we will have one transformation equation in individual stage and this transformation equation <coughs> will be it we will iterate in different stages to get the optimal solution at different stages and the optimal solutions the in the of the different stages these are connected very much sequentially so that whatever optimal solution we will get finally at the final stage that will be optimal solution of the original problem for problem mean original problem is the problem which is big in nature which is very large we are decomposing it different into different subsystems that is why for every problem our task is to first define the stage then we have to define the states of individual stages 
and we have to define the transformation equation transformation strategy in individual stage and how transformation equation is taking role of changing the stages that part I am going to discuss today. <coughs> <coughs> Now, if I just explain it graphically, then we will say that each stage that one tra stage transformation equation will be there. This stage transformation equation will be responsible to convert the state S n minus 1 to the resulting state S n. And what are the inputs for it? The input will be the decision of the decision of the previous stage. And and for if previous stage we will calculate the immediate return and we will use the stage transformation equation to reach to the final stage. This is the basic idea how it is being used I will explain you in the next. But the whole dynamic programming problem is based on the Bellman's principle of optimality. A Bellman's principle of optimality says that an optimal policy has the property that whatever the initial state and initial decision are, the remaining decisions must constitute an optimal policy with regard to the state resulting from the first decision. That is the beauty of the optimality, the optimality principle of dynamic programming and how this optimality principle is being maintained throughout the whole stage that part I am going to explain. Now, there are certain certain uh, variables, certain symbols we are using in dynamic programming problem. Those uh, let me summarize first. Now, stages are, are being named as n. When n is equal to 1, we are at the first stage, but that is also the convention that the initial state is being numbered as n is equal to 0. Now, for individual state stage, we will have the state variables that is S n and from individual stage, we will have the optimal decision that is the D n. This optimal decision will give the return to the next stage. Rather, this optimal decision will produce the return which will be which will be considered in the stage transformation equation that is the return is being termed as R n D n. D n is if it is the it is the decision variable of the nth stage then we can say R n D n would be the corresponding return for that decision. We can have different values of D n at individual stage corresponding to dn we will have different r n dn and by using the trans transformation equation we will reach to the next stage from n to n plus 1 s n to s n plus 1 all right and the function f is the optimal function will be calculated now for that thing let me consider one nonlinear programming problem where we are having one additive constraint and we have the objective function that is in the form of multiplicative separable return. Okay? This model we are considering for the for explaining the situation how really we are using the dynamic programming for nonlinear programming problem. Now, let me consider the model as we have to find out the maximum of f1 x1 f2 x2 up to fn xn that means we are having multiplicative separable return return as i was mentioning before that a separable function is being considered here you see because the objective function can be expressed as different separable functions which the separable functions are the functions of individual decision variables if it is of this form then we can use the dynamic programming to solve this kind of the problem. Now, this kind of problem can be solved with other techniques as well as I have discussed before the constraint optimization techniques, but this dynamic programming very nicely can solve very effectively can be solved and very easily we will get the optimal solution of it. You see we have considered the objective function as the 
multiplication of different functions of individual decision variables. Instead of that, we can have the objective function as the additive nature, where we will have the functions of individual functions which are additive. That means, we will have the functions in the form of summation in, in place of product. All right. We are considering the simple model here and the constraint is as the is of the form single additive constraint. We are having only one constraint. This is the simplest model we are considering. Now, you see how really we are defining the stage, how really we are defining the states for this problem. Here a1, a2, a n these are all the constants, b is another constant and a i's can be positive, a i's can be negative as well same as for b. But x1, x2, xn these are the decision variables all right. This is the model for us. We are going to apply the dynamic programming technique rather the Bellman's principle of optimality for solving this kind of problem. Now, first of all we have to define this problem into different stages all right. Let this problem is considered as n stage problem where suffix i indicates the stage that is why we need to decide the value for x i and for each value for x i we are having i is equal to 1 to n we have to introduce the state variables for individual stages. That is why you see whenever we are considering we are considering considering at the nth stage as nth stage as the combination of n variables n minus 1 it stays as combination of n minus first n minus 1 variables. Second stage will be considered as the combination of some additive combination of the first two variables a1 x1 plus a2 x2. Thus, the first state variable stage variable will be considered s1 as a1 x1. If we considered the state variables like this you see we can say s1 would be is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 that is why this can be written as s2 minus a2 x2 that is you will get a pattern you see sn minus 1 would be sn minus a n by xn minus xn in this way we will have a pattern to it and next we are going to formulate the recursive formula. Now, dynamic programming problem as I said we are having the test stage transformation equation at individual stages and this stage transformation equation will play the same calculation will have the same calculation in each iteration that is why this process is a recursion process. And we are going to define in the ne next how the recursive formula can be defined from here. You could you see if we define the problem from the constraint set in this way if we redefine the variables instead of x1, x2, xn if we just redefine as s1, s2, sn ok. We are just transforming the variables from the set of x1, x2, s, xn to s1, s2, sn you see we are getting a kind of recursion there. There is a recursion process always s n minus 1 would be s n minus x n a n x n that is why I put x n is equal to 1 you will get one set n equal to 2 you will get another set in this way you will get the <coughs> this way. <coughs> now you see we are having the recursion formula like this here the objective function is of multiplicative form all right. That is why at the nth stage if we define in this way f n x n is equal to maximum of small f n x n that is the function with the nth value only and this is the capital F n minus 1 is n minus 1 this is the optimal value for n minus 1 nth stage. That is why you see the Bellman's optimality principle says as that we did not to think about the initial condition we are only concerned about whenever we are in one stage we are concerned about the previous stage. That is why at the nth stage we are considering as input the optimal value of the n minus 1 stage and the 
objective function of the NSTs, nothing else. Since the problem is of maximization type and this is the multiplicative in nature, that is why I can say return at the nth stage is equal to we have to maximize f n x n f n minus 1 s n minus 1. See the recursion here you start from n is equal to we can go in dynamic programming there are two ways we can do the recursion. We can go forward recursive formula we can use we can go from 1 to n we can do the backward recursive formula as well from n to 1 we can do. Okay. Here we are going from 1 to n if we know 1 we can calculate 2 if we know 2 we can calculate 3 in this way we are proceeding. Once we are calculating for n we need to know for n minus 1 okay, that is the case. Now we will solve one uh, nonlinear programming problem with this recursive process. Okay. And we will first calculate f1 s1 then f2 s2 then f3 s3 and we will reach to f n s n. And every optimization problem would be problem of single variable because you see here only the variable is x n no other variable is involving here is involved here all right. All other variables are not changing only x n in changing for different value of x n which x n gives you the maximum return that would be the optimal at the nth stage. I hope you understood the basic principle of dynamic programming. Let us apply this problem for the no, one specific nonlinear programming problem. Now, what is the procedure for doing the dynamic pro for applying the dynamic programming technique in nonlinear programming problem? First of all, we have we have to define the <coughs> problem variables. We have to de determine the objective function. We have to specify the constraint. Then we have to define the state, determine the state variables and corresponding decision at each stage. We need to find out this is the steps we need to follow one by one. Once we got it after that we have to specify the relationship state of one stage as a function of state and the decision of the next stage. If we go forward all right now after that after using after uh, doing this we will proceed we will follow either the forward recursive formula or backward recursive formula to get the optimal solution at different stages these are all connected with each other one optimal solution will be the of one stage would be the input of the next stage that way we will proceed it could be forward recursion, it could be backward recursion, we will use it and we will solve the problem after that. Okay. Now, let us consider a problem maximization of x1, x2, x3 subject to x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. You see here the objective function is of multiplicative return and constraint is of additive type. Now, we have to use three state variables like this by considering s1 is equal to x1, s2 is equal to x1 plus x2, s3 is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. We are just transforming from x1, x2, x3 decision variable stages we are to s1 s2 s3 combinations okay you see we are getting a pattern s1 is equal to s2 minus x2 s2 is equal to s3 minus x3 in this way okay clear now if this is so you see the first problem the first stage problem will be only we are having the objective function is x1 x2 x3 with the first state variable we can formulate the subsystem as maximization of x1. Maximization of x1 there is no constraint there is no end of it that is why no optimization can be done at this stage. Let me proceed to the next stage we are going forward that is the next stage is f2 s2. Okay. This function how the function is the function is maximization over x2 into x2 and f1 s1 
all right the previous. Now you see f1 s1 is equal to x1 that can also be written as s2 minus x2 that is why this problem can be defined as maximization of x2 into s2 minus x2 then this is a unconstrained problem of one variable that is x2 and we will get the first necessary condition for it. If we just take the first derivative with respect to x2 equate to 0 then we will get x2 is equal to s2 by 2 all right we can go for the second order derivative as well to get whether this is gives you the maximum value or not that also we can do with this value all right this is quite clear that your function is x2 into s2 minus x2 that's so if i just differentiate twice we will get the value as minus 1 minus 1 means this gives you the maximum value that's why you see the optimum value we are getting x2 as s2 by 2 okay let us move to the next stage that is the stage as x3 rather s3 if i just write down f3 s3 this is is equal to max of over x3 only x3 f2 s2 just now we got f2 s2 is equal to what f2 s2 is equal to x2 into s1 all right is it clear x2 into s1 we got and what is the value for x2 x2 value we got as s2 by 2 okay x1 can be written again as s2 minus x2 that is why x1 is s2 minus s2 by 2 that is why that is also s2 by 2 clear that is why the optimum value up to the second stage we are getting s2 square by 4 all right and we are having the function as maximization x3 s2 square by 4 this and maximization of x3 this is again one single dimensional problem where where the no constraint is there x3 is the free variable it can take any positive value from 0 to infinity. Now again we cannot do with s2 we know the relation that s2 is equal to x3 by x3 that is why let us convert it into that form we will get it and from here by using the differential calculus method we will get x3 is equal to x3 by 3. What is your s3? s3 is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 and you have the constraint that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 5 that is why you are getting the value for x3 is equal to 5 by 3 once you are getting the value for x3 you will get the value for which one s2 how we will get the value for s2 s2 is equal to x3 minus x3 you will get the value for x2 you will get the value for x1 as well that is why we can you see we can solve the problem very easily like this we will get x1 is equal to 5 by 3 x2 equal to 5 by 3 x3 equal to 5 by 3 and the objective functional value would be 125 by divided by 9 clear now we go we applied the Bellman's optimality principle for the case where we were having the multiplicative objective function additive constraint we can have the other way as well additive constraint additive separable region that is another model you see how really we are using the stage transformation equation how really we are using the recursion formula here just you see first of all for this kind of problem we have to define the state variables how many stages we can define for this problem we can have n number of stages similarly let us uh, use the similar kind of state variables because constraints are of similar kind generally whenever we are using the nonlinear we are going to solve the nonlinear programming problem using dynamic programming technique we are Formula, forming the state variables from the constraint set only looking at the constraint set we have to decide what kind of state variable we will use because constraint set will give you certain values that is the only the 
restrictions we are getting in terms of numerals ok. That is why from there only we have to do it. Now, in the similar manner we will proceed. Let me take one example for this just to see we are having the problem minimization of x 1 square plus x 2 square plus x 3 square. Now, you see the objective function is of type f 1 x 1 plus f 2 x 2 plus f 3 x 3 subject to a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 plus a 3 x 3 greater than equal to 15 all right. Now, you see summation of these 3 is coming as 15 can you guess what could be the minimum value of x 1 square plus x 2 square plus x 3 square. try to guess it ok. Now, we let me solve it. Let me consider 3 state variables just like the previous one s 1 equal to x 1, s 2 is equal to x 1 plus x 2, s 3 is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 and we know the fact that s 3 is greater than equal to 15. We know that fact and we have these relations as well. Let us formulate the transformation equation let me go from the first stage f 1 s 1 x 1 square f 2 s 2 minimum of over x 2 x 2 square plus f 1 s 1. Let me convert x 1 as s 2 minus x 2 that is why minimization will be done this way. Similarly, for 3 if we just uh, use the differential calculus method again we are getting x 2 is equal to s 2 by 2 you can check it whether this is correct or not correct and the corresponding functional value we are getting s 2 square by 4 because this is x 2 square it is not 2 it is 4 ok. Clear? Now, we are moving to the third stage. Now, we know this fact all right this is 4 we know this fact if we know this fact we are getting x 3 is equal to s 3 by 3 all right. What is the minimum value for s 3? Minimum value for x 3 is equal to 15 we know. From there we can get that f 3 s 3 minimum of this certainly s 3 is equal to 15 we will the will be the minimum value all right. If s 3 is 15 then we will get s 2 is equal to and for which value of x x 3 that is x 3 is equal to s 3 by 3 that is why x 3 would be is equal to 5. If you get x 3 equal to 5 then you will get x 1 plus x 2 is equal to this 10 and x 2 is equal to 5 x 1 equal to 5 that is the minimum you must have guessed before ok. This way we can solve the problem. Let me consider another model you see we are having the additive return but multiplicative constraint then what kind of state variable will consider in this case we will just as I said to you that looking at the constraint set we have to decide about the nature of the state variables that is why the state variables would be s n would be the multiplication of this s n minus 1 would be this and s 2 would be this s 1 will be this one only the changes are there the you see the pattern is changing instead of minus here division because the constraint is of multiplicative type all right. We let us solve the problem again like this ok. We let me use the state variables let me solve we will get the solution we will see that x 1 will be is equal to this then x 2 would be is equal to this one if we just use the which one the differential calculus approach over x 2 then we can get the value of x 2 is equal to 15 root of 15 ok. Now, if x 2 is root of 15 then x 1 would be again root of 15 then we will get the value for x 3 as well, but we need to proceed for the third iteration otherwise we cannot complete the process. That is why we are moving to the next iteration that is uh, s 3 all right s 3 is this one. Again use the differential calculus approach and we will get the value for x 3 is equal to 15 
to the power 1 by 3. Okay. Now, we are getting the objective functional value you see 3 into 15 to the power 1 by 3 from here. All right. And what about huh? what about the value for x 2 value for x 2 was 15 to the power 1 by 2 all right and x 1 is 15 to the power just you check whether we are getting the same satisfied the same constraint or not the multiplication is coming as how much is coming That's why individually it would be one by three. Huh? X three should be one. X three should. You just uh, do the calculation once more. I will give you more assignments on this part, and we will give you the solution uh, as well for this problem. Now try to solve this problem using the end stage dynamic programming technique. Thank you for today.